Tennessee Intercourse Practice Test for Algebra 1. This is question number 56. This question asks me to simplify the expression x squared minus x minus 2 times the quantity x squared plus x minus 2 over x squared minus 4 for all the values in which x is defined, which is to say I don't have to find any sort of, um, like, you know, exceptions in the domain per se. So for me, all I'm going to do is start factoring these things out. Before I even get that going, I'm actually going to rewrite this as a fraction over 1, sort of remind myself where everything is located. That's just something I like to do. Now, I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to move this over to this paper, just so you can see it. I'm going to factor this thing first. X is already by itself, which is very convenient. So this sign tells me that my answers are, or my answer set for factoring is going to be, they're going to be opposite. So I'm going to have x plus something and x minus something. Then I just need to do a factor list for 2, which is 1 and 2. I'm looking for a negative 1. So I'm going to do 2 minus 1. No, that would give me positive 1. So I'm going to do 1 minus 2. I'm going to put the 2 here because it's got the minus in front of it. Put the 1 here. Really, when you multiply, you can just extend that numerator out. So it's almost like I don't have to do anything to it. But I do need to factor this out. It's going to be a little bit different, but somewhat similar. You see that this is negative again. So I'm going to have x plus something and x minus something. And this time, I'm just looking for positive 2. So before, we said 1 minus 2 gave me negative 1. Well, 2 minus 1 gives me positive 1. So that negative goes in front of the 1. I put my 2 there. Then I worry about this x squared minus 4. This is a difference of squares. If you remember, if the first term is a square and the second term is a square, which 4 is because 2 times 2 is 4, that thing, um, if you change the signs, they'll cancel out that middle term. So what I'm going to do is remember that it's x and x. And since I have no middle term, this has to cancel out in the middle. And it only works if it's a square. To check, x times x is x squared, uh, plus 2x minus 2x, 2 minus 2 is 0, so there'd be no x term at all. And then negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. So that's what I have. Now I'm going to extend out this top part and see if I have anything on the top that I also happen to have on the bottom. And if I do, I can just cancel it out. I have an x plus 2 here, so that's gone. I have an x plus 2 there, so they're both gone. These x minus 2s are gone as well. So what I end up with is x plus 1 times x minus 1. And then I can just use FOIL to work it. I jumped ahead there. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. 1 times x is positive x. And 1 times um, negative 1 is negative 1. These cancel. So you get x squared minus 1, which is F, conveniently enough. So 56 is F. Now, what happens if test day comes around and you lose your mind? Like, you know how to do these, you've done them forever, but then you just kind of lose your brain and you've got nothing to do. It's a test day, high stress situation. Well, as long as you have a, a graphing calculator, you can still figure it out. Make sure your x is not equal to 0, mine is equal to 10. If yours is equal to 0, just graph something, 3x plus 5, whatever. Let it graph and it'll change it to some number. The number itself is irrelevant. Now, you can plug in the exact value that you see on your paper. And if you can't do a fraction here, you can just do a divide. If you're using the TI-84, you can go into the alpha menu and then hit F1, and there's a fraction menu that pops up if you didn't know that. You probably did. But if you're going to do this as a super fraction, which is a little hard to do, you'll do uh, parentheses, and then you'll put another parentheses, so like this. And then you divide that and do the rest. I don't like it. It doesn't look clean to me. And since I can do fractions, I'd much prefer it. So I'm going to hit the BC button for, for me. And then I'm going to go in and do x squared plus x minus 2. Click down and do x squared minus 4, not 44. Doofus. Hit that button. See how it looks almost exactly like the one below. So then I just hit enter, and I get a number. In this case, it's 99. The number itself is totally irrelevant. It's just a trick. And then I can type in my answer choices, 
and that gives me 99 as well. Once I find the same number, I know I'm right. And just to prove it doesn't work with other numbers, that gives me 101. That doesn't work. That doesn't work either. The only one that gives me the same answer is, the, is F, so the answer to number 56 is F. So those are both ways. Uh, mathematically, the first one is much more uh, reasonable and it'll take you further on in your mathematics but the second one is there just in case you know you lose it or you're a bad test taker or something good luck